Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about whether or not I will be able to play at GP Houston or Magic Fest Houston in April. Uh, that is a very big event. I'm still looking for a Jeremy cosplayer, maybe a T-Woo cosplayer as well. And then somewhere one to uh, make t-shirts that said Magic for Good. Was that the one that got banned or was it Magic for Bad? Magic for... I forgot what was that uh, meme Facebook group that got banned. Well, we're all going to wear t-shirts like that because, and then on our cards, I've decided that we're going to vote, but I'm leaning towards writing that the group that got banned from Facebook, the entire Facebook group got banned for a meme but that was too, uh, I guess, spicy. Anyway, um, today I'm going to talk about why they cannot ban me. So I've escaped bans at least two times. I have emails from them saying, oh, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's because I want to I want to figure out a legal precedent. And the legal precedent, in my opinion, to summarize it in layman terms, is I want to see if, if a conservative can do what a liberal does in magic. And I'm not expecting to be promoted I'm not expecting to make the MPL, right? But I'm also going to, because it's a private company, it's a publicly traded private company, and Channel Fireball is a, pub, a private company, and they would be the ones that would be banning me from site. I want to test out some legal principles. And you might think, oh, why are you telling people? Like, the one thing people always say is because they don't understand. Um, and I advise you to read this case, Brown versus Board of Education. Yes, when African Americans were not allowed to go to the same schools as white children, did you not think that they made it very apparent they were going to try the case? When Rosa Parks would not get up, that wasn't a spur of the moment. That was planned, and there was a whole team behind her that wanted to make the legal case. Whenever a big, big example happened in history... I'm not saying that mine is a big example, but I'm just trying to tell you how the law works. You have a test case. And that subject knows. Um, there's, what's that school in Alabama? What's it? I, I watched an ESPN documentary on school, not in Alabama, Mississippi. That student knows, and it's being broadcast that that African-American school is going to attend, or that African-American student is going to attend that all-white school. Broadcasting it does not mean it's not going to happen. Now, in YouTube, I think people are super confused because whenever someone says, I'm going to sue you and you on YouTube, they're actually just asking for donations. I don't want a lick of your money because why would I need it? And, and that's the confusion. Whenever someone's getting sued or suing someone or thinking about taking legal action, the first thing they do is set up a GoFundMe fund, right? I am never going to do that. I don't have any GoFundMe funds. I don't believe in that. So I don't need your money, and therefore I don't have to do the dramatic song and dance that all these other YouTubers do, and then it turns out it's settlement and the money is supposedly donated to charity. Supposedly. Right? So I'm explaining this to explain my next concept. Um, I'm really in love with the law. Um, I was a patent attorney. I passed my patent bar exam when I was 21. And pieces of the law. So patents are extremely logical concepts. They're beautiful inventions that are just mind-blowing, explained in very simple terms. And the same can be said about trade, uh, trademark, you know, this is my brand, this is how valuable my brand is. And the crazy trademark cases like Tiffany's Robin Egg Blue, the fact that they can have a trademark on the color for jewelry boxes and the fact that Louis Batons can have the red sole, those are very beautifully argued cases. And my favorite case is Brown versus Board of Education. It's an incredibly well-written piece on uh, by the Supreme Court justices, and it's uh, probably one of the most, um, from a legal nerd, that's my favorite case. And there's things that, like, when I read about it and I read the actual case and the opinions of each of the Supreme Court justices, I'm like, wow, these people are just so smart. 
like so smart because they can explain something that is very complicated at that time is like, hey, there's a million reasons that, you know, an African, one African American in a school that's all white is a bad idea, right? When did they beat him up? When did they discriminate? When did the teachers discriminate? Like if it's segregation is so inherent, why would we want this, right? I mean, we're just, aren't we just causing a lot of infriction? And But the ways that they rate at the time, the way that it was written was revolutionary. You read it and you say, wow, that is a very good way to explain to the public why segregation is bad. Um, the resources are not exactly the same, right? <laughs> you're you're going to have people and the whole diversity argument, which I worked at NYU Missions, and diversity is very important to any school, especially in learning, because if you come from a highly Republican, I, I live in Westchester, Pennsylvania. That's where I went to high school. That's where I went to middle school. That's where I went to elementary school. At the time, it was mostly white. I don't know what it is today, but at the time, it was mostly white, uh, white people. Uh, and I was one out of three Asians. One Asian was from Canada. Oh, I think there was also a half Asian too. But out of a class of 550, there was not much diversity. And if you were different, you were not accepted. That's how I grew up in that high school. I'm, I'm definitely willing to call out that high school, Henderson High School, as being, re at that period in time, being really discriminatory from the some teachers to, and you know, I say this right now as a 32-year-old because I can reflect on it and say, oh my gosh, they were kind of racist back then. You know, and I think there was a very, um, in Pierce, Ele uh, Pierce, Pierce Middle School, there was a history teacher that was very anti-Chinese, like anti-China this, anti-China. And I don't think anyone who took his class can tell me, and I had him for study hall for class, like it was terrible. Um, and that's the school district in a nutshell, <laughs> was the, they put the one Chinese student <laughs> in the study hall with the one teacher who was anti-China. So, okay. I wonder if that happened in other schools. But um, I, you know, the more I learn, the better of a person I can become because the more opinions. I had a very different opinion of Africa before I went there, Accra, Ghana. I was like, oh, man, it's going to be poor. The people are going to be sad. Man, they're going to be so grateful. And then I go there, and they're happier than I am. I'm like, oh. Shit, like, this is totally different from what I expected. You know, they're happy. I mean, they don't need money to be happy. And that's that's the concept. Like, if you have some extra time, you have to get, I think, malaria. Uh, it's like a yellow certificate. And then, no, not malaria. You get malaria pills. Yellow fever, I feel like, is one. But you anyway, you need to get an injection before you go. And then you get a certificate on your passport. But if you go to a country, and obviously, uh, China was very poor when I grew up. And you see that... But the people in Africa are way happier than people in China, even though at the same time they were the same level of poorness. I'll just tell you that. Um, you know, like, uh, there's, they're just happy. They're happy that the sun is up. They're happy it's not raining today. And they, they take joy. I was um, talking to artists uh, here at an art exhibit. And, hey, he's just happy. He's, you know, his painting sell for a little bit of money. I was like, wow. Huh. Um, so basically what I have to say is you got to get out there and experience different perspectives and different points of views. And that's why I'm so dangerous to Magic the Gathering. That's why they have attempted two times to ban me is because I am a being of logic. I'm a being of, and you know, I'm not going to withhold my views, but I do it in a way that I can understand and I can do research and I can Growing up the way I grew up and then going to NYU, and like I said, I was extremely popular at NYU. Extremely popular. And having those experiences really like led me to realize, hey, open up my eyes, if you will, and that's not a slant against Asian people. It's just open up my eyes to like what else is out there. If you grow up in the countryside or in a very Republican suburb, and that's all, and a lot of my, quote, friends, a lot of my class, I'm not going to call them friends because they're not my friends. A lot of my classmates live in Westchester all their lives. They work at a Denny's and then they continue on and, you know, and that's great. That's great for them. 
but they never see Africa, they never see Asia, they never see Europe, they never go on a cruise to Hawaii, they never do this stuff that I've been very blessed to do. And the more I see of different people, the more I realize, hey, it's not, no, it's not if you are binary, non-binary, white, black, it's, there are bad people everywhere from all types of bad people. And there's nice people from all types of groups. So there's not group dependent. It's totally, like, and the only way I've come up to this concept is I've, I've seen, I've traveled. How many of you guys have been to Africa? Maybe 10%, maybe less. So my opinions of Africa were very biased and incredibly wrong. I thought they were going to be grateful that I'm going to build a school for them. But really, <laughs> I mean, we didn't really do that much, if I were to be honest, with a bunch of a co a college uh, sophomores who are there to party, right? And they're happier than I was at the time because I had the exams and crap I had to do. And they lived this life, and it's a great life. It's a fantastic life. Like, why should I think poorly of them when they're just way happier than I have ever been? And you go to China and you realize that, oh, China is not really, like, supposedly it's a communist country, but everyone here really just loves money. People in China love money more than people in America love money. And that's saying something. Like, I'm serious. Go to Shanghai. Every year they build a bigger and bu bigger building and so on and more money, more money, more money. Dude, they really love money back. They're capitalistic as blank in China. They are. And you might be like, oh, society and so, so. No, they don't care share of anybody. It's everyone for themselves. And you wouldn't know that unless you went. Or like when I went to Italy and I was like, or what was the country? Greece. And I was like, oh, this is the reason the country is bankrupt. Because there's graffiti everywhere. And like, okay, I get it now. <laughs> this is why the country owes Germany like $100 billion. Um, or if you go to Japan and you're like, oh, hey, everyone here is an anime fan. They, in Japan, they have anime things, popular anime. Instead of celebrities, they do the animatronics. Not animatronics, but they're promoting the events. I think, um, what was it that I saw? It was some fashion brand like uh, Gucci or something. Gucci's like spokesperson is an anime figure. <laughs> I was like, whoa, are you kidding me? This is great. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable, but great. So the more that you go out there, if you have the, and that's why I want to go to Egypt. I've always loved Egypt. It's the last thing on my bucket list. I'm going to go soon when I'm still young enough that I don't need to worry about all that crap. Um, but I want to see it because I've heard all these, you know, civil war, and all, but I want to see it because I, you know, am a little skeptical of all the bad things that, you know, hostages is like, you know, I'm kind of skeptical of this type of stuff now because Everyone told me that Accra, Ghana would, would be very dangerous when everyone was just very kind and very nice. And it was a great place to go. Everyone, like everyone told me, oh, I'm going to be robbed or killed. I was like, I was like no, I'm still going to go. And it turned out to be the exact opposite. Same with New York City. New York City is one of the safest cities by per population. It's because we've got police officers everywhere. Which they do a really good job. Most of the time. 